Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Football Fallout. This is where I watch every play of every game of every week, trying to find you the fantasy football knowledge that nobody else has. Today, I am going to be talking about the New Orleans Saints versus the Seattle Seahawks, um, a game that I think a lot of the NFL community was surprised by in the outcome. Even when I look at the stat sheet, I watch the game obviously, but I look at the stat sheet after the fact, and if you look at the stat sheet, um, yeah, you have to wonder how Seattle lost this game. And I'm just going to read you through. Let's start with New, uh, New Orleans here. Um, Bridgewater, 27 attempts, 19 completions, 177 yards, two touchdowns, which is good, and no picks. So he took care of the ball. You see Kamara, 16 carries, 69 yards. That's not great, right? Latavius Murray, who I thought would be a little bit more involved to support Teddy Bridgewater, only two carries. You look at the receiving stats. Kamara uh, led the team in targets with 10, which is something we thought would happen. Uh, again, you know, helping that young quarterback, or I shouldn't say Bridgewater's not really young, but helping that backup quarterback out with some short passes. Nine catches, 92 yards, found the end zone. Mike Thomas, um, less targets, which again, we thought would happen. Seven targets, five receptions, 54 yards, found the end zone. And then Teddy, Ted Ginn, five, catch, uh, five targets, two receptions. You look down the line, I thought Jared Cook would have a much bigger game, only two targets. The stats just aren't there. And yes, I know they returned a kick um, earlier in the game. Um, Chris Carson uh, continued his, uh, his baby oil bath before the game, slit, letting the ball slip out. Carson, you got to hold on to that ball, buddy. You're uh, you're going to put your job in jeopardy if you can't hold on to the ball. I know it was wet, but you're a professional. You need to hold on to the ball. Um, yeah, you know, I know that. But then um, at, later in the game, that guy who returned the punt, I think it's Harris for uh, New Orleans, fumbled. So on the stat sheet, turnover for turnover, it was even. And then you look at Seattle stats. Um, Russell Wilson, 406 yards passing, two touchdowns throwing, two touchdowns on the ground. Carson, the running game couldn't really get going. 15 carries, 53 yards, not very good. Procise, four carries, five yards, not very good. But receiving-wise, he got Lockett going for 154 yards and a touchdown. Disley finds the end zone again, something we predicted. Um, we like that uh, Russell Wilson to Will Disley combo on the goal line. Procise was a little bit more involved in the fat passing game. I like what DK Metcalf is doing. Not a big game, only two receptions and 67 yards. I like uh, Malik Turner, uh, three catches, um, I'm sorry, two catches on three targets. But basically what I'm saying is you look at the stat line and you think Seattle's going to win the game, um, but they didn't. You know, New Orleans won, credit them. Uh, they were in control for the entire game. A lot of these statistics for, uh, for Seattle came in the fourth quarter. And they, uh, you know, they were coming back furiously, but they just ran out of time. So, you know, good for uh, New Orleans. I still remain concerned. I think Seattle's a good team. Um, you know, they put up good numbers. Uh, Carson, that concerns me. Uh, Rashad Penny was not active in the game. Um, I'm concerned if he keeps putting the ball on the carpet, man. Rashad Penny or CJ Procise could be more integrated in this running game. It hurts Carson's value. Watch that, everybody. That's a that's an important one. Um, if you're somebody who likes to trade in volume, if you have Carson, you might want to explore um, moving him into a different asset. Um, I'm somebody who's a little bit more conservative. I would prefer to hold him and wait and see what happens because he is by far the most talented running back on this team. But coaches do not like turnovers. You got to hold on to that ball. Um, um, Tyler Lockett, great. Um, he's probably not even going to be able to be pride of weight at this point. Um, 14 targets, 11 receptions, 154 yards. I said it last week. I'll say it again. This Seattle Seahawks receiving corps is the best that Russell Wilson has had in his tenure there. Um, I think they'll be a very successful team. Um, credit New Orleans, but I continue to be a little concerned. 27 attempts, 177 yards isn't going to get it done every week. Um, it did this week. And and Breeze is going to be back in, um, what, four to six weeks or something like that. If New Orleans can just kind of stay steady and get some of these wins that maybe, you know, pull these games out that maybe they shouldn't, um, they're going to be right in the mix um, for another NFC championship run, possibly a Super Bowl run. So I like the Saints team. I don't like what they did offensively, but it worked. Um, I'm not going to really be a buyer. I think Mike Thomas is going to struggle. Um, with Bridgewater at quarterback for a few weeks like he did this week. He just didn't – look, he got in the end zone. That's great. But 54 yards and a touchdown, look, we all expect more, especially based on where his draft position was. But it will get better once Breeze is back. If you're a trader, um, you can try to trade for Mike Thomas. You know, Maybe after next week or two weeks from now, if uh, if he has a, a couple of tough games with Bridgewater in a row, but he is coming back, right? Tyreek Hills, th same thing in Kansas City. I've had people trying to pry him away from me. I'm holding on to him because, 
that you got to hold on to this Kansas City offense, right? And I think the same is true with Mike Thomas. If you own him, I think you should definitely keep him. Um, but uh, Jared Cook, I, I want to see more. Uh, I want to see more from Latavius Murray, too, to support Bridgewater, but we'll see how this goes. So that takes us through this episode of the Fantasy Football Fallout. If you are going to invest in anything, I don't really have a lot of waiver pickups except for Will Disley. He probably is still on your waiver wire. If you need a tight end, even if you don't, pick him up. That's three touchdowns in three games. Um, last year, I think he had four touchdowns in four games or maybe three touchdowns in four games before he went down with a season-ending injury. He's very good in fantasy football, okay? So you need to pick him up. He's not the, the biggest name recognition guy, but Russell Wilson looks for him in the red zone and, uh, and he comes down with the ball. So do that. Um, you check us out in another episode if you could we could use your support growing the channel please subscribe hit the red button or the logo on either corner of the screen and also watch more videos we need that watch time to become a youtube partner we want to add more content get more collaborators on this channel as well uh, so please do so we could use that support check us out coming up on another episode soon